daily life. Why? The goal of the Eastern wisdom is to bring an end to the suffering once and for all and and awaken to inner peace and happiness. So set an example to your life. And when you set an example, and this is a great opportunity, how the John responds to Sophie and how the Sophie responds to John. When the couple joins, it is, it is again a great opportunity. John says, I will not be joining from next week. <laughs> no, no, so apply these principles in your daily life and I can bet you that moment you apply single principles in your relationship, in your life, uh, in your professional, social, family lives, you will see the life is becoming beautiful. We have been, I think we have been meeting over a year. Now it's the real time. So ask yourself, you will come to know how many times, in how many situations, in how many locations, and with the people last week, you were upset, anxious, scared, and stressed and suffering. It means you didn't apply the principles of Eastern wisdom. Don't answer me, but think of that. <clears throat> think and contemplate and reflect and see what happened and why you didn't apply these principles in your life, in your relationship, at times when you were anxious? It is important. Why it is important? Because we don't want any kind of stress and suffering. And still it enters into the mind, and it enters into our life. So we should understand that why it enters. I don't want, but still it enters. Do you think in that way? You know, the Eastern wisdom helps you to think in a right way. Right way in a sense because that will help you. Otherwise, what we think, you know, John made me stressed, you know, he made me upset, he doesn't understand. Now we start blaming someone. Now tell me how many times, I would say thousands of times since our birth, we have been blaming people. Is it not the right time to stop blame, complain, reaction <clears throat> to any outer situation and start contemplating and reflecting? Just tell your mind, no one else outside is responsible for my stress, suffering and also peace and happiness. Mind, stop this nonsense. Let me think it over. And let me find out how I am responsible for it. I can tell you, your mind becomes lighter the moment you start thinking in that way. What are those problems? Those problems are anxiety, upset, stress, suffering, grief, <clears throat> or a kind of reaction. So we realize that it is all my expectations, maybe ego, maybe the mind is working on us, is causing the suffering. So once we understand that, then we can take the right approach, right action. Is it not clear that we don't want any kind of stress in our life and still we do not think if the world causes the stress and suffering, we never think about it. Instant blame is there. Is it not? Last time, do you recall any incident? <laughs> Now, our reaction may be of different type. You know, our reaction, we have a different reaction. Sometimes we react in anger, sometimes we react with uh, uh, a speech, and sometimes we don't react, but we have a big face. I'm okay. I don't want to talk to you. Why are you talking like this? No, well, well how should I talk? 
I don't know how many of you are reacting like this. <laughs> you know, childish. Don't you see that it's a childish? But still we do it because we have a feeling. So what is the, you know, I'm just giving you a very brief of this. So we do not want stress till we do not think if the world causes the stress and suffering and answer no, it is not this. It is, it is because of the non-thinking. What is non-thinking? Animals do not think. So animal mind do not think, so they move impulsively and instinctively. So when we stop, we, we move into a mode of non-thinking and we move impulsively and instinctively. Are you getting it? Non-thinking mind moves with the impulse, instinct and habit. Why you are saying we are animal mind? No, no, I'm talking of animal mind. We are human beings. I'm not saying we are not human beings. We all are human beings, but we work through the non-thinking mind and that is the animal mind. Animal mind is instinctive, habitual mind. We just, out of a spur, we react. That is what the impulse is. That is what, you know, we discussed about it. So what, you, what is the way? Do I think, uh, speak and act wisely? Simple meaning, it is opposite of non-thinking. I have to use my intellect. After all, I am upset. That is why I am talking instinctively. So when I start thinking, I hold on. I said, okay, let me withdraw myself. See what is the situation, what is the condition, what kind of a relationship, how should I speak. I remove the wrong non-thinking. I have started thinking in my mind. Do you see that? So when I start thinking in my mind, that impulsive reaction stops. What we are doing by thinking? We are trying to find the cause and effect relationship. I was upset. I held it within my mind. I started thinking that being upset is released. And now I'm finding the cause and effect relationship. The moment you are set to find the cause and effect relationship, your level of awareness goes up. You need not to think. You are already living in a higher level of awareness. And with that higher level of awareness, you know what it means by living wisely. I'm making it very simple, easy. Uh, is it simple? How can I get rid of my impulsive and instinctive and habitual nature? And especially I have these impulsive nature with my near and dear ones. You have no choice. Even if you are impulsive to me, may maximum that you will stop at an English But we are highly impulsive and instinctive to those people who are near and dear ones. Am I right? Say yes. You have no choice. You have to smile with me. But you know, but you exercise your uh, deadly choice with near and dear ones. And that is because of the non-thinking. Deadly choice. <laughs> so to live wisely, huh? and to tell you, my friends, that we have been living wisely otherwise. Otherwise, when you go to the kitchen, you live wisely. You don't put your hands on the hot plate. You know it will burn you. Are you not living wisely? Yes, you are living wisely. Ah, you want to dine. You sit on a, you, you sit on a dining room. You don't go to the bedroom. Living wisely. We are walking wisely. We go out of the of door. We don't go out. We don't try to go out of the wall. We are living wisely. Otherwise, you see that? 
but we have forgotten to live wisely in our daily life, in our relationship, in a situation. This is what our Eastern wisdom is saying that I should live consciously. So living consciously means we have added two more principles here. I have talked a lot about it. We are living in discernment and dispassion. We are living wisely in eating, talking, sleeping. Why not we start living wisely in our relationship with people in a different situation? And then ask your mind, am I worthy of suffering? You will get the inner voice that you know you are not worthy of suffering. Suffering has gone. So I would urge and request you that you start applying these principles in your life. The more you apply these principles to your life, your entire life changes and that will set an example. Now uh, uh, let me expand that when we, when we think, speak and act in the mode of non-thinking or you can say when we, uh, when we uh, act impulsively and instinctively, why? It is an answer also and it is a solution also. So our master says that there are two basic major steps why I always my mind moves in the mode of non-thinking or impulsively and instinctively. First major understanding is that why non-thinking? Because the mind is constantly wandering here and there. We are not clear about the goal of life. Second is the forgetfulness. The mind is lazy. That is what the forgetfulness. And third is the mind is obsessed. It is obsessed with something, someone, some person in our daily life. Do you have a thought in your mind that I have been tolerating someone, including honey, for the last 20 years? This is an obsessed mind. You will continue to have a non-thinking. You cannot stop it. So I have to get rid of that obsession of the mind. Keep a smile on the face, don't be so serious, you know, so we are not, I'm not talking of your honey, I'm just talking in general. Don't take it personal. <laughs> so the three factors of the mind, first, it is constantly wandering. In a non-thinking mode, the mind is constantly wandering here and there. Second is, it is lazy mind. It doesn't want to respond positively to a situation, to a people. That is what the lazy mind is. And the third is the obsessed mind. <laughs> think. Think and contemplate. And the second major step will be that once you recognize that there are these three, and what is the... What exactly is the, should be the solution? I should know what exactly is the goal of my life. Before I sleep, I visualize I have three sessions today. This is going to be the last session. Then the next day what I'm going to do, I just put out and made a brief and I made very clear. And then what I told myself that let me evolve again to the next level. Our goal of life is to evolve consciously in every situation in every relationship, at all time, evolution. I should rise in consciousness. With that rise in consciousness, in relationship, in every activity of life.
that will stop the mind from wandering, from laziness, from obsession. Mind says, my honey is crazy, so let me, let me, oh, this is a great opportunity to evolve in relationship. Are you getting it? So you are not harming yourself. You are giving an opportunity to evolve. No, no, he or she does not understand. Why he or she does not understand? I'm using both he and she. My master used to say, if we do not get stuff from the Walmart, do you fight with those people in the Walmart? Why you don't keep the stuff? You go to the other one. No, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> Calm down. That my honey or my relations or my friend has only this much level of awareness and if I say something, he or she will react. Hence, let me keep myself cool and calm. Let me only talk and communicate whatever he or she understands. So I'm evolving, I'm careful, I'm conscious. Rather than I point out. You know, we are constantly in the habit of nagging. Why? Why? He or she is my honey, so I have a right to nag. Unnecessary. That is non-thinking attitude. So that is the first thing once we fix the goal. And the goal, when I say evolution, the goal is just that my goal is fixed at every time, at every moment, in all the relationship, let me evolve and rise in consciousness. Why? To bring an end to the suffering. So you don't get obsessed with the situation, the person, time, and the location. Ah, every time, every situation is a great opportunity to move into a new level of awareness. Whether the person is supporting me, whether the person is not supporting me. So apply that not only to your near and dear ones, but apply uh, living your life 24 by 7. And I can bet you that the moment you, you think, that, oh, this is the guy, I'm going to talk like this, you have from non-thinking, you start thinking, you will find that your mind is completely free. So the goal remains. What is the goal? Goal is to bring an end to the suffering and to live in peace, happiness. So now I'm responsible for it. So now with that heightened level of awareness, mind is not wandering, it is not obsessed, it is not lazy. So now I am consciously thinking, speaking and acting wisely. But it will only come if you listen to this, these talks and principles every day, followed by the contemplation and reflection. You, you have to think. You have to move from the non-thinking to a thinking. So once you think, you find the cause and effect, I can tell you within a week, your mind will inspire you, motivate you. No, you didn't do the practice today. You have to do the practice. You know, we talk of motivation, we talk of intention, everything will come here. So what happens the moment you start thinking one, you're thinking clearly, you move from the non-thinking, it means you have you are, you have dropped the wandering mind, the forgetfulness mind, and the obsessed mind. 
So now this intellect is putting the life in order. And that intellect will not allow the impulsive and the instinctive nature to think, speak, and act in relationship. You will find this mind is totally relaxed and calm. Is it easy? It is the easiest thing to do. We don't want to do. We become a seeker. And once you are a seeker, your intellect passes on the knowledge to you that you are not worthy of suffering. that power of the intellect that is filled with the right knowledge, it gives a check to the mind that is impulsive in nature. So there is a natural state of dispassion. What is dispassion? Indifference, not dictated by any delusion, any sense of attachment. Then what is the result? Relaxation, calmness, peace, joy. Buddha says the way we create, we create the world around me and mine is the cause of suffering. Should I repeat? The, the way the, I created my own world with me in mind, with lot of expectation, that is why I find a particular situation or a person or a time or an event is bad or good. Because it is, I related it to me and mine. So when I relate it to me and mine, so you have to face the opposites. When you have to face the opposites, the intellect stops thinking, the mind moves into the mode of non-thinking. What is the opposites? Profit and loss, pain and pleasure, in relationship to the world, in a particular situation, sorrow and happiness. They will continue to haunt me. But now, when you are clear, you are looking at the world, okay, I have, this world is an opportunity for me to evolve. The situation, the existence has offered me the wealth and all the possessions in the relationship that this existence has offered me is the best to evolve myself. So that me and mine is gone. So once the me and mine is gone, the world becomes beautiful. You see the world as it is. You don't see the world colored by me and mine. Money will come. Whatever the money has to come, it will come. If it does not have to come, it will not come. Let me continue working. Now see, there is a secret behind it, so we should think of it. Why you are saying that, you know, why, should I, why shouldn't I live my life with a me and a mine? Take an example, me and mine. The mind starts singing a song of me and mine since our birth. My home. Does home chase me? My car, does my car chase me? If I die, car says, okay, you're gone. Somebody will, somebody else will ride on. I left the house in New Jersey. You just look at it, me and mine. Me and mine is a language, it is a matter of 
convenience otherwise can you tell me anything that really belongs to me and mine outside yes ah if you come to my house and you will say i will take over your house how dare you it's a matter of language it's a matter of society but internally you know this me and mine tag should not be attached emotionally mentally externally yes can you find anything that chases you answer is no so the moment the me and mine tag is dropped you drop the likes and dislikes you drop the impulsive nature you drop the non thinking mode of the mind so it's it's a tool it's a tool to help that helps you to raise your level of awareness it's a tool don't think john i will take everything from you so it, it's a tool to help clear the mind you are standing before the you know in front of the swimming pool the water does not say i will drown you unnecessary we keep me and mine all the way all the time and this creates a lot of problem it it comes due to the non thinking ah the moment you drop it mind becomes clear you are ready so what happens now you see the last point when you have dropped me and mine so you move from the non thinking mode to a thinking mode dropping me and mine and so this me and mine has created sorrow and happiness likes and dislikes attachment and detachment profit and loss sorrow and happiness they are already gone Did you understand? They are already gone. So where the mind is moving, the mind has started moving inside. So when the mind is moving inside, there is a sense of emptiness or nothingness. Now, what is this nothingness and emptiness? You you have to go to the cause and effect relationship. no i have been thinking a lot and i have been controlling mind cannot be controlled by understanding you drop it you drop me and mine the mind stops wandering you need not to control it me and mine my honey he or she does not understand oh that's why i'm crazy yes be a little more crazy live your life in craziness why because you know he or she is not listening to me ah so they are born to listen to you unnecessary i can tell you this this causing a lot of stress and suffering why you should force anyone but when you don't force your mind is empty what is that meaning of emptiness it is an objectless state of the mind now no object pertaining to me and mine lays in the world that nothingness means the objectless state objectless state means what the outer world is not in your mind you are absorbed into meditation when without practice you are already absorbed into that state of meditation when the world is not in the mind then who will take over what will appear in the mind it is the real self so the real self is revealed that is what the meditation is close your eyes ha <sighs> eyes are closed and uh, so we understood with that discussion 
following their discussion we will be